Oh, welcome, dear travelers. Come, sit by my fire. Warm your bones. Let this ancient storyteller do what he does best. Uh, tonight's story is something special. Oh, you see, silence is golden. But it can also be quite maddening. <laughs> oh, maddening indeed. What can you do when your very life is on the line? Tonight's story is Silence is written by Lotus Moon. Enjoy. Setting is Ponyville. I what used to be Ponyville. The once bustling friendly streets are now empty. Buildings that were once homes and shops now lay in ruin and all the friendly faces you once saw on a daily basis are nowhere in sight. They have been for almost three years now. Three years. It is hard for you to believe it has been that long. Three years since the invasion. Three years since the slaughter. Three years since you last spoke a word. Three years since you last heard anything other than the elements outside. How did things go so wrong? Everything was fine and life was normal. You were engaged to a wonderful stallion. You lived in a perfect home. You had friends who were like your family to you. Happiness was in sight, but within the span of a month, it was ripped away. The invasion came out of nowhere. It was a normal day spent with Sunday Wafer, Minty, and Lullaby Dreamer at Sugar Cube Corner. You were discussing wedding plans for your upcoming nuptials to the love of your life, Blue Winter. That's when everything started. There was a sudden earthquake as if something had crashed into the ground somewhere. Once it was over, no pony thought anything of it, and we all simply returned to our business. Three days later, newspapers started mentioning strange creatures appearing. It was unknown where they came from, or what they wanted. Only that they seemed to attack without the provocation, and even the royal army didn't seem to be able to stop them. At some point, newspapers stopped coming. The train never came through again. Every pony started growing concerned about our world, about how we tried to keep hope alive that we'll get answers soon never realizing we'd get all the answers we'd need. The creatures descended upon us without warning. Only a horrifying shriek and the sounds of ponies getting slaughtered alerted us to the danger. They were enormous, ghastly things that seemed to be the size of an Ursa Major. The skin that looked of a smooth yet slimy texture and claws that could slice through anything like butter. The mere presence caused immediate panic. Pegasi and unicorns tried to fend them off, many dying in the process. Spells seemed to have little effect on them, and even the strength of earth ponies had no effect on them. Through the initial chaos, you frantically ran around ensuring the safety of your loved ones. Many unicorns had to combine their magic in order to have some chance at stopping them. Even with the help of the elements of harmony, it almost seemed impossible. Soon, Princess Twilight Sparkle put a protective barrier around all of Ponyville. But that only lasted for so long. 
During this time of crisis, many hoped the other princesses would come to our aid. But they never did. Either they had to deal with invasions elsewhere, or they were dead. By the time we were afforded in some semblance of safety, you noticed that during times where there was silence, the creatures paid no attention to any pony. But before getting others to realize this, the barrier collapsed, and Ponyville was under siege again. It took almost no time at all before everything fell apart. Ponies doing all they could to defend themselves and being killed. You grabbed your friends and blew, hiding out in your home for what seemed like forever. Once everything was finally over, silence took over. Looking outside, you see the once lively town littered with corpses of longtime neighbors and friends. None of you wanted to believe this was real. But it was. The instant you heard Minty about to let out a torrent of sobs, you silenced her, using your magic to scroll out a note to all of them saying, These creatures seem to respond to sound, so if we stay silent, we'll be safe. This became the first of many notes between the five of you, thanking Celestia for your home being mostly covered in carpet, with the exception of the kitchen and bathroom. Living in silence was relatively easy, though the lack of actual speaking tested all of your limits. When supplies started to run low, you'd use a spell that made each step you took silent. There were points where you had unwanted sightings or encounters with creatures due to unexpected sounds that drew their attention, but you always managed to stay silent in their presence till they left. This went on for about six months, though after that, tragedy was on your heels again. The first tragedy came when Minty and Sunday had a disagreement that went from words on parchment to hoarse verbal communication. The first time they had spoken in months, you tried silencing them, but it was too late. The creatures were coming, and nothing could stop them. Swift like a storm, two of your best friends were torn from your home. The last thing you heard, either of them were screams of mercy, apologies to each other, and finally blood gurgling in their lungs as they were killed. Lullaby was nearly inconsolable after the tragedy, crying as silently as she could into pillows till she fell asleep, wandering around the house and a nearly endless days, losing weight and sleep over your new reality. You and Blue did all you could to keep her from practically falling apart at the seams. After a while, notes weren't passed anymore. The three of you could communicate with just your facial expressions. But even with that, you soon blamed yourself for not being able to see Lullaby breaking her silent resolve. On a cool fall day, you sat on a hill with your friend in hopes of brightening her mood. But then, your soft snickering turned into crazy laughter from your rem remaining friend. You attempt to stop her, but the look in her eyes tells you that she'd rather accept death and go on in this silent world. Giving her one final hug, you retreat back to your home and don't look back as you lost now it was just you and Blue, supporting each other. You survive the best way you can, but food and water from all over the town are growing scarce. Raiding Sugar Cube Corner, diners, even other ponies' homes, were starting to turn up less and fewer resources. You two had even managed to eat nearly all the apples from Sweet Apple Acres, the ones that hadn't gone rotten at least. By now it had been a year since everything went to Tartarus, and you do your best to ration your meals to better survive till help came, keeping your dwindling hope alive. But soon what little hope you had was dashed upon coming home from an almost fruitless food run to find Blue Winter dead. You wondered how until you saw a bottle next to him. 
a bottle of medication. He had committed suicide. As badly as you wanted to scream out in sorrow, you held it in as your tears silently fell. Not wanting to leave him where he was, you brought him to your favorite hill in Sweet Apple Acres and laid him under a withered tree, saying your silent goodbye. Later that night, you make a memorial to your friends and beloved to never forget them. Having lived through so much up till now, going through more loss and sorrow than you thought you would, you wondered how you managed to keep your sanity. You lie on the floor feeling a restless tug at your being, your mind wrestling with thoughts that hadn't surfaced in a long time. Why am I still surviving? How did I keep my sanity through all of this? Why am I still living in this decaying town? What's the point now? I've lost every pony I love. No pony has come. Maybe they never will. How could I know if any pony is even still alive? Three years and not a single other pony has appeared. Even the princesses haven't come. They're dead. I know it. Every pony is dead. Except for me. I may be the last pony alive. Maybe even the last creature alive. Ponies, dragons, griffins, changelings, yaks. Even the creatures of the ever-free forest and beyond a question must be dead. Maybe some pegasi survived by staying in Cloudsdale, but I doubt it. The only creatures that could possibly have survived are the hippogriffs. They escaped underwater to Sequestria. Celestia only knows. I could have tried to find them. But Mount Eris is so far away. I'd never make it. Especially with how little food I've eaten. Hardly anything left and I'm so hungry. I should just give up. Maybe I could join my beloved. Yes. That would be nice. You get up and walk to Ponyville Square. Looking around the town, you reminisce about all the good times you had living in Ponyville. All of Pinky's parties, Fluttershy and her animals, Applejack and Rainbow Dash's competitions, Rarity's designs, Twilight's castle, which lay in ruin. You visited it a few times, but never ventured in for too long for her cautious sake. Finally arriving at the square, you look around, and envisioning how your home once looked as tears filled your eyes. Feeling strong in your resolve, you deactivate the spell that silenced your hoofsteps, and lightly hearing them clop against the solid ground. Taking a deep breath, you open your mouth. Your voice came out hoarse. It took a while for you to recognize it as your own till it was strong enough to echo through the empty town. Your first scream in three years, and soon to be your last as the monsters bear down on you. You close your eyes as the echoing roars and thundering steps get closer. The last thoughts to flash through your mind is the comforting thought of your friends and beloved awaiting for you. Lullaby, Minty, Sunday, Blue, I'll be joining you soon, we'll never be apart again.